Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Ice House podcast. I'm Bryce Stewart, the community manager here at the Ice House. And today we have three awesome business owners, Kate, Miles and Steve with us from our Taking Your Business Forward program, which happened earlier this year. It's an online digital uh, virtual program that we do uh, for business owners and covers a wide range of things. But really why I've got Kate, Miles and Steve on today is really to talk about their journey of becoming business owners, getting to know them a little bit better and how they found the program so thanks guys for being on the podcast cheers awesome well i love to get straight into it with some quick fire questions so let's start with you kate okay coffee order what is your coffee order i'm a minority i don't drink coffee oh man i I feel like i'm a little bit of a unicorn in that regard yeah i don't yeah i don't drink coffee don't really really have hot drinks at all really wow Um, yeah wow that's that's Very amazing with Sorry. everything that you've got going on right now that's yeah. amazing hobbies things that you like doing outside of work um I'm spending time with my family love getting outdoors love being active um which has been a bit hard at the moment with being pregnant so I'm looking forward <laughs> to getting back and being active awesome. um and yeah I just love spending time with my friends and things and, and entertaining and yeah awesome that's so cool the context Kate is due today really it yeah. could be any moment now so that could be an interesting twist to this podcast. Right now on the yeah. <laughs> it could be very interesting um but no that's awesome cool uh what's a book that you recommend people should read um i've recently read jen sincero's how to be a better badass at making money um mm-hmm. and really yeah it was really good in terms of my personal money mindset um and oh. thoroughly recommend it to anyone yeah Awesome. Great answer. And what was your first ever job? Uh, first ever job? Well, I'm a rural girl. So I guess like working on like the, like the farm and things like that. But then my when I was 14, I went into a cafe and asked for a job and they gave it to me. So I think I was just, yeah, like a waitress. Yeah. Awesome. So cool. Love those answers. Over to you, Steve. Uh, coffee order? Yeah, it might be the rural upbringing, same as Kate. Um, I never got into the habit of having hot drinks um we never really stopped for smoko it wasn't until my 30s that when when i had um you know, got into the engineering business that i consistently had smokos and so i <laughs> to learn to be a tea drinker just so i had to do it <laughs> that's awesome wow okay two from three looking forward to hearing from you miles <laughs> um hobbies <laughs> <laughs> hobbies is there anything that you enjoy doing in your free time Steve oh yeah got um twin boys eight-year-olds so wow. got, yeah it's busy with them and um and the things that they're doing but I actually play quite a bit of sport too and um you know community stuff with the rural fire and um you know the board of trustees and things like that so awesome keeping busy that's yeah. cool any any book that you recommend people read um the power of when um by this uh, michael brius yeah just to know your chronotype yeah cool cool that's awesome and first ever job um yeah growing up on the farm so i was as a shepherd yeah. <laughs> awesome answer that's such so a good cool. carry answer yeah, no, right. <laughs> Can't get much more Kiwi than that. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Miles, are you going to save? Are you, what, what side are you going to be on? You're going to be in Team Coffee or, or Team Team? Um, well and truly in Team Coffee. Yeah. Nice. So, <laughs> We're balanced. I'm start the day with about a triple shot. <laughs> we brought some Macchiato. So. <laughs> Brilliant. Cool. That's good. And anything that you enjoy doing in your free time? Yeah, we've got young kids as well. So getting out and about doing activities with them. Um, yeah, we like boating and getting into the Marlborough Sounds. We're in Nelson, so getting over there and gorgeous, cool. Going camping, we're off to Kai Territory this weekend. So oh, things like that. Awesome. And yeah, doing activities with my mates, whether it's fishing or skiing and yeah, out and cool. about. Cool, good on you. Any book that you recommend people read? Um, I'm in the middle of um, BE 2.0 by Jim Collins, which I'm really enjoying. Oh, yeah. Cool. And it's about, I really like Jim Collins. He's really good with good to great and things like that. But it's a good book about companies not just relying on their leaders and, and they're building into more enduring companies. So beyond 
what's it beyond entrepreneurship it's quite yeah. good but yeah. in terms of like just easy reads i read um the gentleman in moscow a gentleman in moscow recently and that's mm. really good yeah just cool. about a guy that gets locked up in moscow and then, cool. yeah and you've given me an idea i reckon from some of my podcasts that i'm doing i should put together a bit of a christmas reading list um for people to get some inspo around what they could read over the summer holiday i reckon yeah, <laughs> that's definitely. awesome that's cool and uh first ever job Mars? um i did the paper run around the hills where i lived so that was cool. it was pretty fun in wellington having to do it in rainy southerlies yeah up and down the hills yeah yeah, yeah awesome cool well we'll stay with you miles i'd love to hear you know what your business is um and your personal journey of becoming a business owner yeah cool so we do visualization services for architecture and design industry and mm -hmm. largely for developers that are uh, developing um, residential products to go on the market around new zealand and australasia yeah. and yeah we often work with the architects either on their projects or developers get in touch and we work with their team to, to really show their vision of what they're putting on the market. Wow, um, quite yeah. creative. Yeah, and we also work with uh, furniture manufacturers as well, we do more and more of that at the moment, creating their ranges to sell before they've sort of rolled them all out mm. um, and getting ahead of them so they can they can test markets as well with our visuals to see if they've got merit to go and manufacture and prototype. So. Awesome. And so how did you, uh, yeah, how was your business journey born? Was it uh, your uh, idea from the start or um, have you come in at some point during the business? No, so everything that we're working on, I've, we've created. Um, I, I'm an industrial designer by training. Yeah. And my father's an architect and I began sort of contracting to him straight out of university, creating imagery and sketch imagery for him so that's really where it started and then from awesome. there moved, moved to Melbourne and worked for architectural firms doing that service and creating visuals so that was sort of going from doing it within an architecture firm as a contractor and then working as an employee for a number of years um, I then got get hunted by a group of photographers in Melbourne to run a studio for them doing the architectural side uh, they do residential photography, so we were working on projects for their clients. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, decided to go traveling for nine months with my wife, uh, my now wife. Cool. Then, yeah, started our own businesses, and that sort of flourished into what it is now. That was in oh, Melbourne, cool. and then we, we moved it back to New Zealand, to Nelson, and it's and enabled us to live where we are, servicing clients all over the place. Brilliant. Oh, cool. That's awesome. What about you, Kate? I'd love to hear what you guys do, what your business is, and your journey of becoming a business owner. Yeah, so we have a commercial signage business called Make Your Mark Signs, um, and basically anything signage related um, we do. So bringing people's and co companies' brands to life, essentially, um, is what we concentrate on. And then I actually come from a background of marketing as well. So I've got another sort of business idea that we're working on at the moment um, that I've, this course has sort of been applied to as well. Um, mm -hmm. helping small to medium businesses with their marketing needs and things as well. So, um, and they sort of go hand in hand with the signage business. Of course, yeah. Um, so how we got started, I sort of, I grew up with parents owning businesses and things, and I always sort of knew I wanted to own my own business and sort of um, be in that position, but I just never knew what or how or when that was going to sort of happen. Yeah. I've been with my husband since we were 17. Wow. have always been in, in trades. Um, and he was in the sort of signage industry and it just sort of got to a point where it wasn't likely that he would buy into where he was. Um, and so we thought, why not give it a crack before we have children and start our own business? Um, and yes, yeah, so that sort of started Make Your Mark Signs. I was still working in a marketing role um, in my, with my previous employers. And then I we fell pregnant, I think, three months into starting the business, which wasn't... Um, <laughs> in terms of timing, how we sort of pictured it. <laughs> but, um, that, that When I went on maternity leave, that's when I sort of came into the business and was way more involved mm. um, and really enjoyed it and sort of took sort of more of that um, leadership operational sort of role 
Um, and yeah, I've been thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. So awesome. Yeah. Cool. So how, how many years now has the business been running? A couple of years? Been just, t- just ticked over three years. So yeah. And so yeah, having a newborn baby pandemic and then another baby, like it's been a while. A while. Hoping yeah. that maybe the next three might be a little bit more relaxed. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. That's a charm. That's awesome. What about you, Steve? We'd love to hear your story and what you guys do. Well, um, <clears throat> central engineering really exists um, for farmers, for keeping farming moving forward. And um, our roots are as an agricultural repair shop. So, you know, we fix a lot of farm machinery. Mm. But we're evolving into doing our own products and manufacturing. Um, and, um, you know, we've got some good wee products that, you know, we're selling to local customers, um, but we want to take that further afield. So the, the business is evolving quite quite significantly at the moment. Um, yes, awesome. We've got two workshops and, um, you know, a team of 11. So we've got some really good good guys on the team and some real knowledge holders. So, um that's quite good yeah awesome I love that I I love these recordings because um you it always brings together people from different industries different stories you know there's completely three different things going on here in different industries and uh, different different businesses yet uh can all relate to an online program about you know taking your business forward um and can integrate it into all different industries which is really interesting to hear so that's awesome. So have you been in the business for from the start, Steve? Um, <clears throat> no, like, um, you know, I, I grew up with an entrepreneurial family, you know, farming and doing other things on the side of the farm. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, all my siblings have got into business too. Um, you know, they've got four siblings and, you know, they're, they're all doing different things. So, cool. um probably um inevitable that, that I would get into it but um you yeah, trained in engineering um at Polytech in, in Canterbury University and I worked as a production engineer at Fisher and Paykel and then in mining at Oceana Gold um and you know learned some solid engineering at those places and then yeah me and Kim <clears throat> my wife um we took the leap um about the same time we, we got married and um, started a consulting business and we were selling CAD software um, and yeah, then saw an opportunity with some legislation that the, the government were bringing in around irrigation and started a, a flow metering business. Mm. Um, and that, that you know, lit, like bootstrapped it literally in the garage and, um, and it went really well. Um, off the back of that, we purchased the local engineering workshop, and you know, in 2014, and just when when the kids were babies, and um, you know, I've been growing it since then. Got enough awesome. board, and yeah. So so cool. Love hearing the journeys of how you guys get there, and um, an ongoing journey, no doubt, um, of growth, which is exciting. Does anyone have? you know, a piece of advice that they would have told themselves at the start of this business owner journey that you wish you knew ahead of time, you know, you wish you knew now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like just in the last few years, I've, I've really had to get stuck into self-management. I got mm. a, um, had a, a head or neck injury um, in 2018. And so, you know, like a concussion. Wow. Um, and um I really had to like become obsessed with sleep hygiene and posture and um, you know stress management. And um, I think if I'd started that journey a bit earlier in life, you know, that could have been quite a good thing. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so interesting. Eh? Sometimes it takes one of those events to sort of shift your thinking, eh, and and get you on track. What about Kate or Miles? Any thoughts around that? Um, I, I wish we started earlier. I wish I felt like we sort of put mental blocks in place saying like, oh, you know, we can't do that. Or that seems so hard or, you know, and and we made it seem harder. Uh, We've made starting a business seem harder than what it is. And don't get me wrong. There's definitely challenges, but Mm. I kind of wish we had started a few years 
prior, you know, before having kids and all these other sort of responsibilities. But mm. yeah, I guess you sort of, you, you're a bit scared and a bit gun shy, but there's no better time than now um, if you're wanting awesome. to take a leap and make a change. So I just, yeah, you sort of think you put other businesses and other business owners on pedestals, but they all started from where we were and um, and it's better to start earlier than later. So yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I think everything I hear across any podcast, whether it be with our owner manager program, um, mm or leadership development program, whatever it is, is that imposter syndrome, you know, not feeling like they're good enough either to be in that room of owner managers or to jump on Mm -hmm. taking your business forward or to start a business uh, is definitely a theme, eh? which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, Miles, any thoughts from you? Yeah, just to seek advice from people earlier than, Mm. you know, trying to do it all yourself. I mean, I definitely tried to do it all myself for the first couple of years and you find yourself not enjoying it as much or not spending the time on what you really want to be pursuing um so whether that's getting financial advisors getting bookkeepers um, getting people to help you with uh, media uh, websites you know not trying to do everything yourself quickly spend all your time on that stuff rather than what's important to moving your business forward totally and when you start sometimes you like want to kind of hold it tight, eh? You kind of want to hold yeah. it close so that, you know, if it goes wrong or, um, you know, you, you hear advice that you don't really want to hear that, you know, it, you're sort of guarding yourself or protecting yourself from that. But long term, um, it's just so much easier to get, you know, advice up front and have those conversations and bounce off others, eh? It's really good. Yeah, it was probably, I think it, about two years into owning my own business, I started asking others, you know, like about their journey. And you understand that everyone just started somewhere very small they've all got a story of growth so don't compare yourself to where people are there compare yourself to where maybe they were at the start of their business or Mm. you know the infancy yeah every expert starts somewhere eh? that's awesome so miles maybe sticking with you how did you first hear of the ice house and um the taking your business forward program um i probably saw the owner manager course a couple of years ago and when I when I saw this course come up uh, recently I I think I started listening to some of the podcasts and subscribing through COVID through the first sort of lockdown Mm -hmm. and yeah just kept kept an eye on it and thought you know we've got some budget set aside for business development so let's invest that in some some other sort of um, skill set so we've definitely been at a point where we wanted to to grow and sort of get some more skills around that growth and it's awesome. just seemed to sing to that yeah what we yeah what we wanted. aligned yeah that's so cool yeah what about you Kate we'd love to hear how you heard about us and uh, yeah I've had a couple of friends similar age to me like they're in their late 20s um start businesses and did the owner manager program and to see where they are now and how successful they've been and they sort of really attribute that to that program so that definitely piqued my interest with Ice House. Um, and then I had a friend do the leadership course through a company that she was in and thoroughly enjoyed it. And she happened to send me through um, this course, which was probably more applicable to where we were at and wanting to you know, grow our business. Mm. So that was probably, yeah. So I, 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 it was more recommendations of people that I know had done really well um, and, and reaped the benefits of it. So yeah, that's how yeah. I heard about it. Yeah, that's so, so cool. I love hearing that. I love hearing the network connection, eh? And yeah. um, part of my role is to look, well, my role is to look after the community once I finish programs, keep them connected with things like this, um, but also to connect each other together, which is um, yeah. cool. So it's good to hear. What about you, Steve? Yeah, um, I think Kim um, found out about it. I'm not sure where from. Um, And we were originally looking at the owner-manager program sort of a few years ago. Um, But I think we were too small for the, you know, for the cutoff. And um, I didn't only just recently found out about this course um you know earlier in the year and and yeah it was a really good fit so awesome that's so so cool that's nice um would love would love you guys to sort of sum up your experience with taking your business forward so obviously it's online um it's quite accessible um to many which is cool but would love to hear how you guys how you found it yeah Kate should we kick off with you Okay. Um, yeah, I thought it was really good in terms of how it's broken down into modules. You should have knew which was coming 
each week um prior to doing the course we did like a a survey of your business kind of like a, a check of where you are at and sort of where you where your strengths and your weaknesses lie so you sort of knew going into the course what mm. modules you should be concentrating on and where your strengths and things are and mm, yeah and where you could be looking to do so I thought that was really helpful knowing that going in I actually found the so each week would have yeah like a module and would and we'll talk about you know learnings and things and some of it I found with being going to uni and being in corporate and stuff like I was like yeah I do know this and it was sort of re- re- refreshing it and been like right how do I apply this to my business so I found mm. that good but when I relayed it and talked with my husband about it he's like oh wow like you know and he didn't really even think about that all those sort of concepts hadn't come to him before so mm. that was really good at sort of starting that dialogue between us both as the business owners Mm-hmm. Um, and then after sort of each module, then you would have breakout groups the following week, which I found quite beneficial, particularly probably because I was probably one of the younger members in the in the group. Um, and I found sort of the knowledge that I got from, you know, like Steve Miles and, and other people in there um, was really beneficial, um, even oh. though, like you said, different industries, um, but similar problems. And some of them are a little bit further down the track than what I was, but could relate to what I was going through and and gave really good, solid advice. Um, Mm. And so, yeah, I found that really beneficial. Um, My probably favorite modules were the finance one, because that was probably a big weakness of ours. Um, Coming from a corporate sort of, or bigger, working within bigger businesses, I've always had like a finance team where I just fire away and avoid (laughs) it. And I haven't had to, I haven't had to do, yeah, sort of end, of end of month accounts, any of that sort of process ever before. Um, and same with my husband, he's been trades and had someone else doing that. So that was a really beneficial module for us um, mm. on a business sense and a personal sense, really. Um, and looking at how we change our money mindset and how we manage our money within the business. Um, mm. so yeah, that was sort of the key ones. Awesome. Yeah, just giving you that confidence eh, to, um, to lead into things that haven't been yeah major in your in your words before but uh, major as a business owner so yeah that's awesome uh what about you miles any any thoughts on the program yeah i thought it was great like we're all from such diverse different backgrounds and industries but the reality is we're all trying to lead our companies the best we can yeah and you guys in the ice house have seen us a hundred times before So we're almost profiled and there's, I think, some great wins that you're able to to give to business owners like us to, you know, step forward and whether that's 20, 50% or 100%, you know, we can take it as we need it. Mm. And uh, yeah, that that to me was the biggest and greatest thing about the course is that no matter what industry, there were things that we could all apply. And then as Kate was saying, we can learn off each other. Yeah. Um, totally yeah it blows my mind um you know ice house has been running for 20 years this year um it's a lot of business owners coming through and yeah it just blows my mind that in every conversation they say like i turned up to this course whether that be owner managed program or taking your business forward i thought how are these people from different industries going to get my you know problems and challenges and then realize we're all walking through the same stuff so that's pretty special to see what about you steve any thoughts on the program um, yeah, I thought the ICS did a good job of it. Like they're really professional and the content was really good. Um, you know, for us, it, we've sort of used it as a bit of a, a tool for this overall development that we're doing um, mm. into, the, into manufacturing. And, um, you know, having that consistent time where you, you're thinking about the business and how you're doing things and... Um, that was that was really good. Um, really loved the networking and mm. the, you know, the the way it was set up with one week of content and then the next week you were talking to to the other guys about that content, you know, um, and how to apply mm. it in your business. It was a really good way to do it. it really, really useful. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And leads on to. Um, a question I've got here, which is kind of a selfish question, but I'd love to know what your guys sort of ideal business community looks like and um, how important, I guess, that networking piece is to you past your program. If you have, if anyone has any thoughts on sort of, um, yeah, networking and, and how it is important to you as a business owner. Well, yeah, networking is 
really important. I love to see businesses collaborating. Um, and um, you know, I think um, what the ICS have got with the, the ICS Central um, you know, is, is really, really useful. And like I've used it already, um, got in touch with a, a manufacturing company in Dunedin. And um, yeah, that's you know, right. I'm going down to meet up with them um soon and you know there's there's other awesome. organizations too like so rec and that that um that yeah that, that are building people building businesses to work together and it's really good yeah cool cool yeah i love hearing those stories about ice house central where you know now that you're an alumni forever you've got access to the whole alumni data you know about database of the ice house and see my favorite thing about that platform is seeing people have questions chucking them on ask an offer and like you said being connected with other businesses in your industry people that have experience they can give you answers within a day and I think there's something real special in that feature specifically so that's cool to hear any other thoughts from anyone don't have yeah, to I think, you know. I think what you're building there is great and as it as it gets bigger and bigger and more used I mean it, it shows that there's people on there who are willing to push their businesses forward because they've engaged with the ice house or they're trying to take their business really to that export level um, and to be able to ask questions there and know that you're getting answers from people that are alumni. And, yeah. That get it, eh? That just understand mm -hmm. and, um, you know, maybe have, yeah, more experience than others. Um, but, yeah, it is, it's cool. It's a good platform to be able to help others help each other, uh, which is really cool. Yeah, awesome. Nice. I, I sort of want to look back in a way and just see if anyone has any anything they specifically implemented into their business or lifestyle since doing the program. I know, Kate, you sort of mentioned the finance piece, which, um, you know, which is a good point to, you know, to say, because lots of people say like, oh, I've definitely implemented some, some new financial sort of processes from yep. our programs. Is there anything else for anyone that they've gone, oh, okay, yeah, we'll implement that and gone ahead and done it? We've gone, we've also gone and hired some different like staff in areas where we were probably a bit reluctant to just a bit risk adverse, I guess, with the current climate and things as well. Yeah. Um, but all quite good timing, I guess, with knowing that I, you know, baby's on the way. So we sort of had a bit of a deadline coming and how do we want our life to look like within the business? So the, the course was quite timely and making us sort of like, oh, like see it as an overall picture, you know, how do we work within the business? How do we want our life to be? Yeah. Um, and what staff, where, where can we implement things that are going to alleviate some of the pain points that we do have within the business? Um, so yeah, some of the content and things like that was like, you know, pretty much saying, you know, hire or like look at this area. And then when I had those follow-up chats with um, some of the guys and stuff um, in those sessions, they're like take a punt like do it and we have and it's just been like the stuff that we awesome. have had have been amazing and it's just been like wow yet sometimes it's just taking the confidence to do that so that's been a huge game changer for our business um right. going forward so yeah that's so cool yeah it's so cool that you sort of took the opportunity to view life again you know take a bird's yeah. eye view at life and how you want it to look like going forward and what changes you can make and that the program helped you do that yeah. Any other thoughts, guys, on impl implementing things? Yeah, the program, you come out of the program. I'm not sure if you guys have finished up your sessions um, with putting the 90-day plan in place. Yeah, the one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. But that's the last part of the course. And that's, gives you, it, you know, should you take it, it gives you a really good plan to move forward with, 90-day um, forward or however, how much time you want to put to it. But um, I've definitely got a pretty clear goal um, on all fronts both for ourselves the business and my role in that so mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And already implemented a couple of things out of that um, mm. financially and staff wise so yeah. awesome miles yeah that's yeah. really cool no, it's the same with us too um but we're because what we're doing with our developments quite removed from what we're currently doing we we're looking at working with um Kevin from the ice house to get right. a bit more coaching with um, branding and um, online marketing so you know, I think um, that was probably the, the module I enjoyed the most and um, was the most relevant for, for where we're at so, yeah great yeah, yeah it was awesome yeah, yeah Kevin's so cool eh? he's a great 
great coach at the ice house but has great great experience in terms of online marketing so hope that goes well i'm sure it will be um yeah really beneficial for you guys steve yeah, um thanks. just a general question i'm going to throw out there what's a piece of advice that you'd give to a business owner right now like it's it's crazy times being in business and there's some really interesting conversations happening you know, around the uncertainty. But one thing about business owners is that they are optimists and um, they charge through. They don't let anything stop them. Is there anything um, you'd like to sort of say uh, to business owners sort of in the waters right now? So there's a lot of uncertainty, but there's a lot of opportunity at the same time. Yeah. Um, and to keep the uncertainty at bay, just look after your existing clients really well. Great. my best word of advice but then look for those opportunities at the same time mm, great mm. advice that's cool nice. yeah i'd say i guess like nothing's guaranteed and challenges are always going to come you know regardless so particularly being from christchurch and there's been like earthquakes and pandemic like there's something's always going to be there there's always going to be challenges the one thing you can control is how you react mm, so wow. i guess um if you choose to have a bit of more of a positive mindset rather than scarcity and, and acting out of fear and things I feel like as a business you can only make good decisions going forward from that yeah that's so cool yeah that's so true we can we're in charge of how we respond to things right um yeah. so that's power you know it's it's nice to have that power to know that you know we are in control there what about you Steve? Oh, it was just focus on the controllables just like yeah. Kate said really um and, and I think, um, you know, focus on your team because a lot of people are feeling it at the moment. So, um, yeah, just got to look out for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Yeah, I'll stick with you, Steve. What's um, What does the future look like for you guys in your business? And what's, what's one way listeners could support you guys? Well, like... For us, it's really exciting. Like, um, you know, we've, we've sort of gone from keeping our community running to, you know, m keeping farming moving forward. And um, so it's it's a complete change in purpose and mindset. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting these these products um, marketed, uh, you know, in a, on a bigger scale um, is really exciting. And, um, you know, just if anyone's listening in um, the agricultural or um, manufacturing spaces, um, you know, I'd be keen to network and work together. Awesome. Yeah, so cool. I'll make sure I pop you guys, you know, names up there and businesses so people can, you know, easily reach out if they did want to. Um, so that's really cool to hear. Steve, lots of growth coming, right? It's exciting. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. So, so cool. What about you, Kate? Um, we're looking at changing premises and things at the moment as well. So changing all of that and a lot of stuff that we uh, do sort of contract out, bring it more in-house. Um, so that's exciting in terms of the opportunities and things that we'll be able to offer our clients as well. Mm. Um, and then in terms of supporting us, yeah, I mean, if you need a sign or <laughs> um, any branding needs, we do like fleet vehicles, sort of buildings, anything really in terms of signage. So um, our focus in the next year is um, particularly from this course is looking at the types of jobs that we do want to take on and um, looking at some of that bigger scale um, construction um, tender work. Um, so that's what we want to try and sink our teeth into um, going forward for larger scale projects, but then also looking after our smaller scale stuff that we've got going on at the moment too. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cool scale opportunities there yeah. eh, for you guys to scale. Exciting. Yeah. Growth again, eh? That's cool. What about you, Miles? Yeah, well, we're really able to throw our skills at most areas. We mainly focus on furniture manufacturers and architects and developers. So if anyone wants to have a chat about how they can market their products um, and how we can help with that early phase inception to, to visualize what they're trying to put across to the market. We can definitely help with that and use lots of different technologies and skills to, to do that. And we're pretty malleable in the way that we can offer those services. So, so, so cool. Oh, thanks guys. A really cool conversation with you guys. Nice to, you know, personally have a conversation and to meet you and, um, you know, good to hear that you've all got something valuable from taking your business forward. And now within that alumni network, uh, for sure, we'll keep in touch. 
um, within the community. So thanks heaps for sharing your stories today. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.